Hey YouTube, thank you for joining me today. I want to show you something, give you uh, a little bit of information about a common problem on the um, Mercedes uh, V6 motors. The, in that case, it's the E350. Anyway, I have two codes. One of them is crankshaft position, camshaft position, uh, correlation, bank one sensor A, and the other code is crankshaft position, camshaft position, correlation, bank one, sensor B. Um, this problem uh, creates the check engine light to come up. The car is not running now because I took two sensors out to do to find out if this is the problem. But uh, it gives uh, the P0017 and the P0016 in that case. It might be the, the left bank, in that case it's the right bank, uh, bank 1 is the right bank. And I'm going to show you uh, what is this code coming from and how many troubles you're into. So stay with me, I'll lead you through the process of finding out if that, uh, that is the problem that you have. Hang tight. Alright, so I showed you the codes that you get and by the way I got it on just a regular um, on regular uh, onboard diagnosis, I usually use my uh, star diagnosis, the Mercedes star diagnosis. I get it almost sounds like the same code, you know, it's got different verbal information, but uh, it's the same camshaft retard or something like that. Uh, but it's got the same code, the car won't pass emission, and there's nothing visual that you can see or feel on the motor that will make you insinuate that there's a problem with the motor. So uh, what is the problem and how do you know if this is the problem that you have? That's uh, the purpose of this video. Um, I can tell you that if you do have that problem, as soon as you delete the codes, they will come back again um, uh, almost instantly. As soon as you crank the motor, it will come back again. So you can't really delete the code. If you could delete the code and the code went away, there is a very fair chance that the code is going to come back again. What I recommend is that you... Uh, immediately change the oil that you use on your motor and make sure you use only synthetic only fully synthetic in that case uh, Mercedes uh, recommend the mobile mobile one synthetic I recommend Titan synthetic it's a better oil um, let me show you what is the oil that I usually use on uh, Mercedes and tight I'll show you All right, if you can put your hands on this oil, this is the Titan Super Synthetic. It's a German engineering, uh, German technology, as you can see. This one is a 5W40. This is the best oil for German motors. If you drive a BMW or you drive a Mercedes, even a Volkswagen, any German car, the German engineering is a little different than American engineering or Japanese engineering as far as the, the design of the uh, inside of the motor. And you can watch other YouTubes that I've done and you can see why it's important to use the right motor. Uh, just Google my uh, name on YouTube. And uh, Google my name on YouTube. Huh, that's the first. But uh, look for my name. Look for other videos. And you'll see why it's important to use the right uh, um, oil. But in that case, this is the oil that I use. Um, best oil. Never have problems with it. So let's go back to the motors. And let's see what are these codes. Uh, so back to the about. motor. What the code's basically saying is that you have a problem with the reading of the timing of the camshaft. Uh, both codes referring to the position of your camshaft in reference to the position of the crankshaft. Give me one second, let me fix that light here. All right, the light is in, let me see. No, the light is not in. You know what, let's turn that light off. Actually, no, let's leave it here. Sorry about that. All right, both codes referring to the position of the camshaft uh, in reference to the crankshaft because you know all of them are actually uh, communicating together to let the control module uh, know where the motor is positioned so the ignition control unit which is sitting right here will know where to put the spark in reference to the fuel because uh, it's important for the motor to know uh, when the combustion should happen so it's corroborating in between the crankshaft position which will tell the um, information will give the information to the ignition control unit to know when to shoot the spark to create the explosion in the combustion chamber 
Now the codes what they're talking about is the position of the camshaft in reference to the crankshaft. The crankshaft sits on this wheel right here. This is the crankshaft front wheel. Let's see this one right there. You see where I got the ratchet connected? Um, that's where the crankshaft is sitting on and the, the piston rod connected to the crankshaft and they travel into uh, the uh, piston holes which are called the cylinders which are there are two banks there is the right bank and the left bank in that case we have a problem on the right bank and the right bank will be this side over here let me show you the motor there is a right bank that will sit right here and there is a left bank that will sit right here there is the crankshaft in the middle and there is pistons that are going in a V way to both sides of the motor in that case we have a problem with the right bank which is right here now I'm going to show you real quick how to identify how to identify what the problem is and if you have the problem that may require a serious and expensive repair so what you're gonna to have to do to find out if you have the problem is you take both and by the way a lot of people think that the problem is with the camshaft position sensors and they go and replace the camshaft position sensors which are these ones right here and they're connected one of them is connected right here let me see if I can up oh, all right I put it back in and one of them this one is connected right here okay so what most people think is oh my uh, sensor is not reading right I'm going to change my sensors so they disconnect these two sensors right here and they replace them that's uh, before you replace them I want you to do that test and find out if you have a retard on the uh, on the timing of the balancer there is a balancer inside that actually uh, um, help the camshaft uh, be balanced to be able to uh, deliver the right information to the ignition control uh, unit so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take both um, let me see why we're not focused alright you're gonna take uh, both sensors out there is one screw that hold them you don't need to disconnect from the wire harness just take them out remove them and now I'm going to show you on the inside there are the two uh, the, the intake um, camshaft and the exhaust camshaft and that's what you're going to see now now I'm going to show you what you're going to be looking for okay so right now that's what we see we're going to look uh, for two circles and I'm going to turn the motor in a second and you're going to see them we're going to look for one circle over here one circle over there and when we look for these two circles they got to be aligned perfectly with the holes and when they are aligned perfectly with the holes the crankshaft got to be at 305 degrees exactly to the point where you have the line that mark the position of the crankshaft so if you can see on the crankshaft you're gonna see some numbers let's see the numbers all right you see numbers on the crankshaft it's kind of hard to see let me see if I can show them from this side hang tight with me I'm sorry about all of that but let's see if I can show you the timing on the crankshaft the numbers you see numbers you see the lines yep. the lines have numbers on them what you got to do is you got to bring the crankshaft so you see number 305 right in front of this line right here this is the center of the motor and you're going to have to try and get 305 the number 305 which is 305 degrees off the crankshaft to be aligned exactly with the line that i show so let me do that real quick and i'll get back with you in a second hang tight before i do that i just want to make sure you're turning the motor to the direction that the motor usually turns which is this way to this way that's where you're going to turn your motor you're going to come from here and turn it this way then you grab it back again and turn it this way again until you get to 305 so let me do that real quick and I'll get back with you in a second hang tight okay I still didn't get to 305 degrees but I want to show you the numbers this time where you can uh, actually see them so let's see where I'm at I'm sorry for that I'll adjust it in a second just hang tight all right here are you see the numbers okay now I'm gonna keep on turning until I get to 305 degrees and it's got to be aligned exactly 
we are at 290 295 here's 305 you see that's gonna be 305 right there this is 310 and this is 300 in the middle it's 35 I think I went just a not too far let me see no I'm actually right at 305 okay now when I'm at 305 I'm gonna be looking for in these two holes right here for the the two circles and they gotta be perfectly aligned so let's see if they're perfectly aligned no I can't even see them and the reason I can't see them because I got to turn another 180 degrees so let me turn back to 305 degrees another 180 degrees um, and just hang tight two seconds I'll get back with you in a second all right so let's see again if I'm at 305 degrees okay we are right at What is the number? I can't really see. Uh, 300. Needs a little more to be right at 305. And bam. This is 305. You see? And it's a line. Now I turned that 180 degrees. Now let's see if we can see the circles inside. Okay, now look at that. Let me get some light. You see how you see the writing right there? You see how it's not aligned with the circle? The circle got to be right in the middle. Look at this one here. And this one is quite in the middle. It's okay, even though it's a little off, just a little bit off. But look at this one here. This one is completely off, and it's got to be centered. 100% it can be moving to the right or to the left because that's exactly what the crankshaft is saying that the camshafts are not positioned right so when you get to a point that you see that on your motor and it's not adjusted exactly 100% in the center it means you have to replace the balancer now to replace the balancer it's a different uh, it's a different video it's a long, long, long job. I don't know how much uh, Mercedes charging for that. To my opinion, at least maybe 28 hours. Uh, the reason for that, it's not only because you got to do the whole timing. It's because you got to take actually the oil pump that created all the problem. Actually, it's not the oil pump that created the problem. It's you that created the problem when you put cheap oil in your motor. Or when you didn't use the right oil. Or you went to... Uh, Cheap places where advertise uh, oil change for less than anybody else, and you created a bigger problem on the motor. That's why it's so important to use uh, synthetic, fully synthetic, uh, high quality oil when you do oil change on Mercedes. Uh, this is one of the reasons right there. The oil doesn't travel very well through the channels that it's got to travel, and it's creating uh, um, a delay on the uh, camshaft balancer. I'm not going to get into all the terminology of all the, the information that uh, explain what happens. But the job on this one will probably take, uh, the, for us, probably roughly maybe a couple of days, three days. I'm going to probably make another movie that will explain all that stuff in detail. Uh, but what we're going to do in that case is just open, well, basically open everything. So stay with me, look for my videos. I'm going to make another video of how to change the, the balancer, camshaft balancer, and I'm going to give you the information. I appreciate you watching my videos, sign to my channel. I have uh, good videos that you wouldn't find in a lot of different places. And of course, as always, if you have any question um, or you want to know anything, just shoot me a line um, and I'll respond as fast as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.